Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast, Standing Up Edition. I'll explain that in a minute. This is probably going to be one of my shortest, if not my shortest ever video podcast for a couple of reasons. Well, mainly just one reason, which is I'm still kind of recovering from the surgery that I had last week. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this podcast when we get into sort of those men's health TMI territory. But basically, I can't be sitting down on anything solid, like a bar stool, which is what I normally sit on. So I'm doing this standing up. And some of you, the more maternal types, are probably getting ready to type, Steve, you should just be lying down. You should be taking it easy. And you'd be right. But I'm still going to be in the same amount of discomfort lying down versus standing. So I might as well knock out a podcast. Additionally, um, I am in enough discomfort that it's kind of causing me to sweat a little bit. So periodically, you may be seeing me dab away some perspiration. I'll start out this podcast with a little bit of sort of channel slash YouTube news. The first thing I want to talk about is disappearing hearts. So very often when I read comments, and I want you to know that I read it and that I appreciate that you sent it, but I don't necessarily leave a comment, I'll give you a heart. If you go back then and edit that comment, the heart goes away. And this makes sense because say you type something like, Steve, I love your show or whatever, and I give you a heart, and then you come back and you say something like, uh, Brussels sprouts taste good, then uh, the heart goes away. So if you ever see a heart and then it goes away, there's nothing goofy going on. It's just YouTube's way of sort of making sure that you're not getting a heart and getting a thumbs up and then changing your comment. The next thing I want to talk about is giveaways, and I suspect most, if not all of you, saw the video on Friday, my last big giveaway of the year. It's a big one, Lots of stuff. And I'll link to that right up here. I definitely am going to keep these going. Uh, I don't know at what pace exactly, whether it's every other month or, or what, but I still have a lot of keto goodies to give away. So I'm going to keep making giveaways from my stash. Anyone who has won a giveaway by now should have either received their prize, or whatever you want to call it, or at least gotten a notification. I think the last batch, um, it would be like the, the cookies and the Aviate flour. Now, David from Aviate told me Amazon was complaining about the addresses, the Canadian addresses. So if you are one of the people who has won and you haven't received your prize or gift or giveaway thingy yet, you know how to get a hold of me. It's the same way you got a hold of me to give me your address in the first place. Let me know, I'll make it right. The next big topic is this recipe that I've been working on, that I've teased a little bit. It's a lasagna noodle, it's a tortilla or enchilada wrap, it's a cracker or a cookie, not a cookie, a chip, like a tortilla chip, and it may at some point even be a pizza crust. And I've, I've been struggling with it for a while now, just feeling like I'm 95% of the way there. And I think one of the struggles has been that I've tried to basically use the same recipe to do all three or four things. I've got chips nailed. I've got them down, the tortilla chips. Now it's just a matter of trying out the recipe with like a little bit of corn extract or taco seasoning or, or something like that to see how that turns out. The enchilada wraps, basically I'm able to take these big sort of sheet noodles and cut them into strips, you know, or squares, you know, four by four, four by five, and wrap it up, you know, wrap up mozzarella sticks in them. And then, you know, some enchilada sauce and I bake it and fantastic. I would like it if they were a little bit more firm, there were a little bit more chew to them. And the furthest one that I'm away from is the lasagna noodle, which is still close. I made some lasagna. The wife thought it tasted great. I thought it tasted great, but I feel that the noodles need a little bit more chew. So what I'm doing, I'm recording this on Sunday, and as soon as I get done with this, I got to send an email to Dennis at Black Tie Kitchen. He's ordered all the ingredients that uh, he needs, and he's going to help me out on this. One of the things I had mentioned last week is that if we as keto recipe creators are more willing to collaborate with one another and less interested in being, you know, I'm the guy who created such and such a recipe, if we kind of set our egos aside, I think we can do a lot better, cooler stuff for the keto community. And that's why I'm in this. Well, that and I want to make this my job, my career. 
But I think if, if greed and making money and putting recipes behind some sort of a, a paywall, like only giving them to your Patreons or something like that, I just, I, that, I mean, that's, if people want to do that, that's their prerogative. But for me, I, I want keto to be something that everybody can access. I want keto to be something that everybody can do because they can make the recipes that they love and they crave. And to that end, like I said, I, I expect I'm going to be doing more collaboration. And I'm hoping that now with our two brains, Dennis's and mine, together, we can crack this by the end of the year and release a couple of videos. So I think that will be one of the videos that I do before the end of the year, the cooking videos. I think the other two, there's going to be one probably on thickeners again. And there's going to be one on some sort of custom mayonnaises or mayonnaises that I'm going to do. I took my brine from the, uh, it was the pickled lettuce that I did. I did the two versions, the savory and then the sort of, I don't know, the more crispy one. But I took, I saved the brine from the savory one and used that instead of the water and vinegar in my mayonnaise recipe. And wow, good stuff. I think I'm going to start using pickle brine on a regular basis. Some sort of pickle brine as a base for my mayo. That's, that's going to be one of them. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the three. Also, I was scheduled to have a, a call today with Chef Scott from Modernist Pantry, and he and I were going to do an interview and hopefully you know video it and talk about some of the modernist cuisine ingredients, molecular gastronomy, and especially hydrocolloids, thickeners, stablers, etc. So once my health is back to tip top and I feel that I can sit for an hour and have a conversation then uh, we'll get that recorded as well. So I think that is the update on the channel and probably an okay time to take a little break. So I have a pretty major announcement here and I've been debating whether I should hold off on making it or not. And I'll tell you honestly, I'm, I'm a bit conflicted about it. And that is, Connor and Jaden are going to be closing on a house at the end of the month. So here's where I'm a little bit conflicted. On the one hand, I'm proud and impressed that the two of them at this early stage in their life have saved up enough money that they could put 20% down towards a house. I, I was nowhere near that good with money back when I was 21, 22 years old. So I really give them a lot of credit for that. On the flip side, on the flip side, I, I don't know if they're fully ready for it. It's a huge, huge commitment, and I, I don't know that they've taken into account the, the time and the money commitment that goes beyond simply making a mortgage payment. But, you know, it's something they're going to have to figure out on their own, and I suspect that they're going to be house poor for a little while. But so there's that. Then the other good part, so I'm kind of alternating back between, you know, my conflict elements here. The, the good part is I'm kind of looking forward to having my house to myself and my kitchen to myself. And as much as I love Colton and love hearing him run around and stuff, it's, it really does impact my ability to work and to, you know, drive serious keto and lean body mind, hopefully at some point. And I suspect that I'm gonna have a lot more time. Uh, certainly I'm gonna have a lot more time in the kitchen. I'm gonna have a lot more time in general because I'm not picking up after people all the time and cooking meals for everybody all the time. So that's, that's a positive. The, the sad part is I'm gonna miss those guys, I'm sure, pretty rapidly after they leave. And it's not like they're going far away. The house they're getting is about a half an hour away and I'm sure they'll still be here regularly and, and Colton will be here. And I don't even think they're probably going to move out of here immediately. It could be a several month sort of staggered thing. So that's that. Uh, life just continues to be an exciting thing. And finally, let's get into talking about my surgery. This is not going to be, I hope, super duper TMI, but it's going to be a little bit TMI. And I think it'll help out any guys that may need to have this procedure at some point in the future or their loved ones to understand what their guys are going through. But the procedure is called Eurolift. I talked about it, I think, last week, where 
they go in through your urethra. It's hard to say your urethra. They go in through your urethra, or mine in this case, and they put a series of clips in that basically spreads open the donut hole that is your prostate or inside your prostate. And they use seven clips on me, which I guess is the maximum. And the surgery, I guess, was a success. At least that's what the doctor tells me. Um, I love anesthesia. That is such a good little nap. <laughs> I wish I could get some of that at home. Help me out when I wake up at two in the morning. However, I then had to have a urinary catheter, which um, isn't awesome at all. For some reason, I thought I had the bag, the bag that fills up with your urine, and then you just you know open it to empty it out. For some reason, that struck me as kind of cool. But the whole tubing aspect, not so very cool. Um, it was extraordinarily painful the next day. Well, basically, here's the big side effects that I've been dealing with and why I keep sweating here is frequent bladder spasms. So think about the worst time you've ever had to go to the bathroom and it's almost bringing tears to your eyes or, you know, in this case, you know, sweat to my brow. That's what it feels like almost always. And I'll go to the bathroom and get not very much productivity and uh, I'm good then for 10 minutes and then it hits again. So I've been dealing with that for the better part of a week. Now it's starting to get better, which is good. Additionally, I can feel my prostate. Um, like, I don't mean like with my hands. I mean, I physically am aware of my prostate right now. It feels an awful lot like I'm getting a perpetual DRE or digital rectal exam. There's just this, it feels like a pressure on it. So, on the whole, my mood has not been spectacular this week. I, I now have a great deal of empathy for, for women who on a monthly basis go through a lot of discomfort. And I understand now why they can be a little bit moody at that particular time, because I've been moody. I've been grumpy. And uh, yeah, there's, so there's that. Uh, in terms of the catheter itself. Here's a helpful tip if you ever have a urinary catheter, fellas. And this was given to me by the nurse that removed mine. She said, take a deep breath and then act like you're blowing out a really big birthday cake. And that was a great suggestion. I mean, I'm not saying that it felt fun, but it, it certainly, it, it takes your focus away from what's happening and it's sort of a stress relieving, you know, it's type of a exercise, I guess. So if you ever have to have a urinary catheter removed, blow out the cake. So that's all I'm gonna cover of that particular surgery and what this past week has been like. Once I get all the way through to the other side and I'm on the positive side of all of this, I will probably do a dedicated video just for men. Well, I suppose women can watch it too, but, but mainly so that men know what to expect from this whole procedure leading up to and afterwards and any tips or tricks that I've learned that I might share. Oh, here's one. If you ever do need to have a urinary catheter put on or you know that you're gonna have it put on, break out a razor and shave a chunk of your thigh because they're gonna tape a, a contraption on there that controls the tubing. And when that comes off and uh, you've got a hairy thigh, it's kind of like that scene in 40 Year Old Virgin where Stephen Carell is having his chest waxed. Yeah. So anyhow, that will be a dedicated video, so I'm not taking up time in the podcast with it. And hopefully I'm on the other side of this in another week or two. Oh, uh, one more thing. The doctor said no heavy lifting for three weeks. And that's kind of a bummer because I had just started getting back into strength training and had about a week and a half or two weeks of it under my belt, just starting to get warmed up. And now I probably got to wait until the beginning of the year. He also said no sex for three weeks. And uh, my response to that was, yeah, that doesn't really change anything. Anyhow, that's it for this podcast. Thank you once again for watching or listening.